Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for being with us today. I hope you've enjoyed the conference so far. My name is Fabian and I'm a co-founder of Keyless. And today I'd like to talk about the trends and challenges we see in strong authentication and identity first security and introduce a novel approach to solving the long lasting trade-off of user experience, security and privacy based on breakthroughs in the areas of secure, private and distributed biometric authentication that enables a passwordless, privacy-preserving future of managing our identities and puts us users back in control. One of the overarching trends we see in enterprise security is the move to passwordless. And passwords are really the underlying problem, with more than 80% of data breaches going back to lost, stolen, or weak credentials. And if I were to ask you about the last time you had to reset your own passwords, it wasn't probably all, <clears throat> all too long ago. In fact, more than 50% of IT leaders reuse uh, their password across all their accounts online. So this trade-off of user experience and convenience on the one side, privacy and security on the other side, has really been dominating the authentication and identity management landscape for years. Today, uh, we can highlight several trends in the identity um, first security uh, landscape where passwordless authentication as a high impact and very immediate um, trend is very prevalent um, across many enterprises today. There's also a move to zero trust uh, or the move <clears throat> to the cloud in the context of digital transformations that really puts identity at the center of that identity first uh, security landscape. And more looking uh, into the future, we're seeing that concept of decentralized identities or personal identity management as we call it at Keyless, that allows for a more user-centric, a user-controlled identity paradigm and selective disclosure of personal information in a more private and secure way. And when we look at the um, trends and challenges we see in the enterprise uh, context um, these days, uh, in this new normal where we have people work from anywhere, we're seeing uh, more and more devices that are being used, whether that's mobile, tablet, workstations, rapid transition into the cloud, fueled by uh, a rapid digital transformation uh, that has been accelerating over the last year dramatically. Um, at the same time, we're seeing growing fraud and cybercrime, privacy regulations, security, uh, cyber attacks, um, but also social engineering, so phishing, fraud, account takeover, uh, that have been skyrocketing over the last few months. So what companies uh, need to embra embrace is a solution that really focuses on the individual at the very same, uh, at the very uh, context um, to access um, the right information at the right time uh, in a way that is seamlessly integrated into the existing environments, whether that's on-premise, in hybrid settings, or as a service uh, delivered through the cloud. Um, we works across um, a variety of channels, um, a variety of platforms, and ensures that the user, the employee, is truly the person who is accessing the services in a way that is not just easy to deploy, but also very easy to use as employees, just as end users um, are, are very happy about delightful uh, digital experiences. And where we see this whole evolution go is really from coming uh, from the password from the 1960s to today over added layers of security, hard tokens uh, that we use in the enterprise context, soft tokens, um, predominantly in, in user facing context, thinking of payments when we have to copy paste pin codes or switch to other soft tokens to authorize our transactions to biometrics as we know uh, them from our smartphones today, which are local and tied to our devices, to a future passwordless paradigm that we call zero knowledge biometrics that embraces privacy as core element of the solution and allows individuals to authenticate and identify themselves from any device and any touch point with a simple look in a front facing camera. To a future of identity management that um, is controlled by us as the end user. So that decentralized identity landscape, where we've coming from siloed environments. So established trust through username and password to each and every interaction we do digitally 
to federated identities, predominantly in the social um, context, the login with Facebook, um, Twitter, Google, and so forth, who act as the identity provider and federate access into individual applications, which is more used in the social and everyday aspects rather than money related and financial as, um, and means where we have the stronger form of, of security, typically through OTP codes uh, or other soft uh, tokens that we use to the decentralized user-centric identity paradigm, which is based on public key infrastructures for identity um, and require underlying key management operations of cryptographic techniques uh, that establish trust on a peer level from us individuals to the related party that we're authenticating against. Uh, and it allows us to selectively disclose our personal information in a more private and secure way without actually revealing the information itself, but rather proving um, that the, we are who we claim to be uh, in a way that preserves the privacy of our information. And when we look at this evolution we've just described coming from the passwords uh, about 60 uh, years ago over hard tokens, soft tokens, to biometrics as we know from our iPhones, whether that's Touch ID or Face ID technologies or the equivalents on the Android and other platforms, to this um, zero knowledge biometric paradigm uh, that embraces privacy as a core element of the solution and truly authenticates or rather identifies the individual across every touch point without involving biometric information, uh, as in not processing personal identifiable information, which is based on a unique combination of privacy enhancing uh, technologies, uh, cryptographic techniques around secure multi-party computation or zero knowledge proofs with modern biometric authentication methods, probably facial recognition and behavioral characteristics uh, that allows us to authenticate individuals across every device in a consistent experience without involving biometric data. And this addresses the fundamental limitations we see with biometric authentication methods today. And there's really two broad paradigms as to how we can biometrically authenticate an individual, which is either local, so on-device biometrics, um, that tie the user to one device that we can use. So think of um, our smartphones, where that biometric fingerprint, that biometric template is enrolled and stored on a, yeah, the trusted um, execution environment, a secure enclave, so a trusted environment chip on the phone that we match against. The drawback here is that we can only use that one device that we, um, where we have our biometric template enrolled, so it's not universal. In addition, it rather unlocks the phone as a token, it doesn't really identify the individual. You could enroll anyone's face onto your phone or anybody's fingerprint. The service that you're authenticating against just knows that you're using the device that is linked to your account, but doesn't know who the identity of the actual person is who's using that device. On the other side, if you really want to authenticate and identify an individual across every device, you would have to match against a biometric template that doesn't uh, reside on the device, but is stored in a central point, a central database. And from a privacy compliance and security perspective, this is far from ideal. So um, the solution that we propose um, combines the best of both, offering user control, privacy and security of, of the local authentication technology with a universal experience, uh, authenticating the individual rather than the device, and certainly without any shared credentials. So with enrolling once into the keyless um, solution, um, you could use it across every device and identify the individual. So rather than using uh, a device key and authenticate that device or unlock that device with your biometric information, the actual key, the password becomes yourself and you can use it across every device with only having to enroll once at the very beginning and allow yourself in a self-serve manner to link any device you, you wish to use um, to your account and authenticate and identify yourself um, from these devices. So the approach we at Keyless propose is this unique combination of privacy enhancing technologies, cryptographic techniques with modern biometric authentication methods that allows for a frictionless experience that looks and feels 
like Face ID. It happens in a fraction of a second as a fully software-only solution. So it works across every device, independent of the underlying hardware or the operating system. It offers built-in multi-factor security, whereby we verify the device identity as a trusted factor of possession, independent of the user's biometrics in a multimodal manner. So this is facial recognition with strong liveness detection, which happens passively. So you couldn't use a video or picture and behavioral characteristics. So the unique patterns and characteristics of how you're interacting with your devices with a simple look that's consistent across every device without involving biometric information. So we're not processing personal identifier information. So we're removing the burden of capturing, storing, and processing sensitive personal information. So this isn't just compliant to privacy regulations such as the GDPR, but in fact far exceeding these requirements as no PII information is involved. The building blocks for this solution are based on three pillars. It's cryptography, zero knowledge proofs to verify the device identity. It is um, neural networks, the so machine learning that we're running on the device to capture the user's biometrics and transform them into irreversibly encrypted opaque objects, which we're then using um, to be matched in, in the encrypted domain through a cryptographic distributed protocol, leveraging a secure multi-party computation scheme, whereby the result of all this is the reconstruction of a private key deterministically that can be used to perform a one-time action, such as logging in to an enterprise application or connect to an SSO without any password. So we capture the user's biometric input. The user looks into the camera. We're taking these signals. We're transforming them into shares. We're matching them in the encrypted domain. And the result of this is a private key that you can use for a one-time action. Again, without storing any sensitive information, no secret key material, no biometric information on the user's device, but also, and more importantly, not in any central point on the infrastructure side. So there's no central database that holds these biometric uh, information. Um, and we offer multi-factor security with every look into the camera. So we're combining the device identity as a factor of possession, independent of the device that you wish to use. So it could be an iPhone 6 without Face ID, a Huawei Android device, a Windows workstation uh, as <clears throat> the factor of possession. The user's face, um, so facial biometrics, uh, that includes passive liveness detection. So we can distinguish between a real world human being and a video and a picture. <clears throat> These are FIDO certified biometrics. And the user's behaviors, um, so the unique characteristics around the way you move the phone, the way you hold the phone, touch the screen, swipe on the screen as an added layer of security on top of the existing two factors that we're employing um, by design. So really using um, or coming from these three elements of authentication, something you are, your inherence, something you know, uh, the ownership of the device, and something you know, uh, a knowledge factor, such as a password, to a paradigm where you become your password. There's no need to carry around an additional piece of hardware. And there's certainly no information and no password that you need to remember. So when you initiate an authentication, for example, you want to log into an enterprise application or your VPN, you simply click on a login button. The first thing we do is we verify the device. And we do this through performing a zero knowledge proof on a secret, a device secret, that makes the device a trusted factor. We then read the biometric input. So you, the user looks into the camera, we capture that biometric, we're assuring that the user is a real human and not a video or picture, which happens passively. We then extract these biometric features and we transform them. So we split them in pieces and irreversibly encrypt these pieces. And we then take these opaque objects and match them in the encrypted domain through a cryptographic secure multi-party computation protocol, whereby the result of this computation, in case the authentication is successful, meaning the individual presents a fresh live sample of their face into the camera and is using one of their trusted devices, is that <clears throat> shares of that private key in, in encrypted form are sent back to the device that can be decrypted and reconstructed for a one-time use. For example, to generate an authentication token and log in to an IAM system. 
after which that secret disappears again. <clears throat> so we call this omnichannel biometrics, essentially authenticating individual across all touch points, whether that's employees or consumers, um, in a unique form that offers a much higher assurance than existing multi-factor authentication methods, which can be used for customer onboarding, user identification, strong authentication, specifically in the context of PSD2 open banking and strong customer authentication, but also related um, or adjacent use cases such as digital signatures as we are not just performing a biometric authentication process, but rather uh, biometrically enabled key management. So when we're thinking of that whole landscape of identity and access management, we're really looking at a massive opportunity, which is growing double digit year on year with around 30 billion uh, of uh, market potential in the workforce context alone and about the same on the consumer space, which is rapidly evolving. And the solutions we offer here uh, are essentially twofold, which is one for uh, employees. So <clears throat> a frictionless workforce authentication suite um, that offers passwordless MFA to SSO, desktop MFA, for example, to access Windows workstations, which could be done through the companion device or push notification, uh, but also leveraging the built-in camera of the laptop itself without the need for an additional piece of hardware or a device. And remote login when connecting to VPNs, remote desktops, and so forth in a way that we can assure that the individual, the person, the employee is the genuine individual who should be accessing the corporate network or the application rather than just the person who's in possession of uh, an additional piece of hardware to authorize that multi-factor authentication process. And on the consumer side, we offer the same technical capability, but in a white labeled form as an SDK, uh, predominantly in the context of open banking, uh, PSD2 and strong customer authentication um, that allows um, businesses to strongly authenticate their end users with a consistent frictionless experience one simple look into the camera across all end user touch points without the need for us to copy paste pin codes from an SMS or email or switch to another soft token uh, to perform that multi-factor authentication process. We're also offering digital onboarding, including um, the verification of the identity and ongoing multi-factor authentication uh, and adjacent use cases such as digital signatures. Uh, and in the future, <clears throat> Yeah, the concept of what we call the personal identity management capabilities around zero knowledge proofs, so selective disclosure of our personal information in a more private and secure way that is interoperable, not just across devices, but also across underlying infrastructures for identity, that, um, PKIs for identity that are being used, where we can provide the link from you as an individual, a human being, to your cryptographic keys and manage that in a frictionless and seamless way. So if we think of passwords being complex today, uh, managing unique cryptographic key pairs for every uh, digital interaction that we make and that we control will certainly be uh, a challenge. And this is really what we started out with uh, at Keyless, allowing everyone to access any service from any device while keeping our personal data safe, private, and under our own control. So really embracing uh, control, user control, privacy and security as core pillars um, of that new paradigm of, of authentication that we enable through interoperable private biometrics, which is something that has been recognized on the identity and access management uh, landscape or hype cycle with other great companies in the space recently. And <clears throat> we consider ourselves as a deep tech cybersecurity company, which are pioneering this new privacy preserving paradigm of biometric authentication and personal identity management that we offer across workforce and consumer uh, solutions, working with a variety of amazing companies, uh, identity and access management providers, technology providers, partners, system integrators in the space to help our customers uh, protect their workforce uh, and enable strong customer uh, authentication, which is um, not just user-friendly and frictionless, but also more secure uh, and privacy-preserving. 
I'd like to conclude with a few examples uh, to showcase the difference uh, and the impact that we're having with our customers. In one case, in the education vertical, uh, Louis University, which is one of Italy's um, most renowned universities and business schools, um, chose us uh, in a partnership with Cisco to help them identify and authenticate the students who are um, performing exams and remote education um, from their homes. So they are not able to be in the classrooms and are physically present. Um, so they need to authenticate themselves. Um, certainly shared credentials, passwords are an issue, but also local authentication technology like Face ID is not the ideal solution because you don't know who the real individual is who is sitting at home and accessing the service. Um, so what we offer here is high assurance that the student is really the individual who at that very context from their own devices is authenticating and accessing the remote session or exam session. Um, and they were able to pass their exams, graduate and continue with their studies um, in, in a frictionless way. Another vertical, um, the banking context, but really the whole enterprise uh, segment with the re a remote workforce is VPN authentication where we help um, European bank to authenticate their employees in a remote setting um, in a way that they can be sure that the employee is truly the person who is accessing sensitive data and the corporate network from a remote location outside the office. So we're using the keyless authenticator uh, to access um, the VPNs, which is all done through standard um, integration points of so radius protocols in a way that was deployed in a matter of hours and we went live within a day and we we're serving around 1000 employees um, who have a frictionless and secure experience when working remotely. And lastly, uh, highlighting some of the new uh, capabilities that are being built is uh, the work with global telco providers uh, and Amazon and their mobile edge computing, um, which is really, uh, yeah, accelerating uh, the speed of um, authentication and next generation uh, yeah, services such as the keyless authentication solution, uh, which dramatically reduces latency when it comes to authentication, download speeds, etc. It's been deployed within hours and we're able to bring down the authentication speeds to milliseconds um, in a fully distributed and decentralized manner, leveraging this mobile edge computing and 5G enabled um, technology. Uh, with that, I thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'd like to offer uh, you to please get in touch, send us an email, uh, visit our website, please visit us at the engagement zone. Uh, myself and our team are very much looking forward to being in touch. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you.